Hello, students of statics. This is Dr. Dan Baker. And today's video is going to take a look at moments from couples. So we'll talk a fair bit about vocabulary today as we figure out what we're talking about um, and a new type essentially of a moment called a couple. So if we take a look at this word couple, there's two different definitions we can make of it. One of those is that a couple is a moment produced by two equal opposite and non-collinear forces. All right, so equal is pretty straightforward. Opposite, meaning they're going in the opposite direction from one another. And non-collinear is pointing to the fact that they're not on a single line, okay? They don't share the same line of action. So what this could look like, say that I have this rectangular rigid body and I have one force over here, call this F1. I have another force here, call this F2. And if F1 magnitude, is equal to F2 magnitude, and they are on different lines of action, right? Remember, the line of action is the fundamentally the direction or the line upon which a force is applied, and that they are in opposite directions. In this case, one's going up and one's coming down, that we could call these um, a couple. Sometimes you'll hear it called a force couple, um, but we essentially get a moment from these couples because if you think about, if you sum forces and sum moments relative to just these two forces, your sum of force is going to equal zero. Right? If you have equal forces in opposite directions, they're gonna sum to zero. But it turns out, if you sum your moments, and this is a vector computation, but my vector above, about any point, we'll end up with the couple of these two forces, okay? And we'll talk about how we compute that couple, but fundamentally, it doesn't matter what point we pick. We could point a pick, excuse me, we could pick a point here on F2, we could pick a point over here along the line of action F1, I could pick a point over here on this end. I technically could pick a point way up here by my letter M in moments from couples. And I'm going to end up with the exact same sum of moments. Okay, that's one of the really beautiful things about these couples. Now, noting that the only term that makes a difference in the value of this couple, not only it's gonna be the magnitude of those forces, it's also gonna depend on how far they're separated. Okay, so I'm gonna call this R. So we can write that the sum of moments, and for this first example here, let me pick this point right here, call this point A. So my sum of moments about point A is going to equal, now because F1 goes through point A, there's no moment from that one, and so we're just going to have um, R, actually I didn't even put a subscript, We are simply going to have R cross F2, okay? Now let me put a subscript on this R vector. Let me call this R1. So this here would be R1. And it turns out that you get the exact same moment as if we summed moments. Let's say in this case, we picked a point in the line of action of two. And we picked this point over here, call this B. So the sum of moments of B is equal to, now we'll have a position vector going from B, from our point of interest, over to the line of action of this force, call this R2. So this would be, so this gives us a cross product of R2 crossed with F1. But the value, both the sign and also the value of these is exactly the same. Okay, and it also would matter if I, pick, like I said, if I picked any other point, I'd pick a point over here on this end, point C, I'm gonna end up with exactly the same sign and value. Now let's take a look at the right-hand rule for both of these. Okay, so for the first one, the sum of moments about point A 
if I slide my fingers along R1 and curl them into F2, you should have to turn your hand, curl your fingers upwards, or doing the three finger, you should end up with a positive moment from the right hand rule. Same thing if you slide your fingers along R2 and curl them into F1, that should be a little bit more comfortable, just at an angle with your right hand that you get also a positive. So both positive, both the same magnitude, everything about them is exactly the same and would get that value you the same no matter where we summed our moments okay so what we can say about a couple is that they are location independent and so essentially what that location independent means is that um, no matter where you sum your moments need to add in your couple. All right, and hopefully you'll notice here that as we wrote these two R vectors, that the R vector is always pointing at the force they are actually computing in that cross product. Right, so just notice that here, that R1 is pointing at F2, while R2 is pointing at F1. Okay, I suppose I could have flipped those subscripts there, but just notice that these, these R vectors, um, I'll put a little note here that says they point at the force. Now, certainly if you picked a point that isn't on these two lines of action, you'd end up with moments from both F1 and F2. And it would turn out if you added together the moments from both F1 and F2 about any point, it's still going to equal these values right here. Okay. So if we take a look at some notation, it turns out that if I have a couple, there are times when couples are already resolved. Okay, Resolved means that they're already... Um, the value is already found for you, okay? So we could have an equivalent free body diagram that could show a couple. Now this couple, we can also use the right-hand rule as we examine F2 and F1. They're gonna create rotation, right? And that rotation is going to be in the positive right-hand rule direction as you point your fingertips around this rotation. And so we can draw this and I tend to use red for both couples and also forces. So this would be my couple from F1 and F2. And the idea of location independent, while the there's always an applied location of a couple fundamentally, it turns out that we have the exact same external effect. And I'll write all this out here in just a second. But I have the exact same external effect, no matter if that couple sits over here on the upper right, on the lower left, halfway in between, it does not matter, okay? The location of that couple is um, independent of its values. And even if you summed moments right in the middle of that couple, you would still add it in, okay? So to write out that in words, we said that a couple has the same external effect on a body regardless of location. All right, now there's a key word in here and the key word is external. So in statics, we're going to spend most of our time looking at rigid bodies, which we don't care what's going on inside of them. We only care what's going on with this non-breaking, completely rigid, indestructible rigid body. But as we talked about the fact that we could move this couple around, and while it doesn't change the external effects on that body, it would actually change the internal loading. Okay, there's some internal factors we're going to get into later in statics. One's called shear, one's called moment, one's called um, 
axial load. And as we move this couple around, it turns out that we would actually be getting a different distributed um, level of forces inside the material, inside the fibers of that rigid body. Okay, but externally, if we're assuming it's a rigid body and we don't care what's going on inside, um, then we're good. Okay, so a couple has this has the same external effect on a body regardless of rotation. Now, as we get into couples, realize that all couples on two dimensional problems will always have a k hat value from the right hand rule. So this would have a k hat that's positive. Okay, once again, put your fingertips on that arrow tip. Your thumb comes out of the screen that tells me a positive K hat. Now on a three dimensional problem, let's say that we had a beam here. And if we apply, um, they call this a wrench moment is one of the common ways to talk about this, but essentially, I can draw this couple as a double-headed arrow. Now, corresponding to that, we also, if you put your thumb along that double-headed arrow and show that your fingers wrap up and over and around, I'll do a contrasting color there of blue to show a wrapping up and over and around. This is how you could indicate a three-dimensional couple. Okay, so a 3D couple uses a um, wrapping, arrow and or a double-headed arrow. And so essentially this kind of a couple is trying to twist this um, three-dimensional body, like I said, in the plane of your screen, and it's going to be basically spinning around its long axes. That's the effect that that couple would have. But on a two-dimensional, they're always going to be rotating in the plane of your screen. Okay, so if we look at this one up here, um, this couple here is going to be rotating it in the plane of the screen. The last two things I wanted to mention is essentially how we use couples. We could think about it like when we need to recognize them versus when we just can not worry about them. So let's say that you had a problem that had, here's a two dimensional body. There are some applied forces, one on the end here, one coming up on the end over here. Let's say both of these are 10 Newtons. And that we additionally had a force here in the middle of maybe 20 newtons. And if you were asked to sum the forces and also sum the moments on this body, which we've previously done those two things, one really cool thing about couples is that even if you didn't notice that this 10 newton force and this 10 newton force formed a couple, if you just went ahead and summed your moments on this body and summed your forces, you'd get the exact same answer as if you'd recognized that this was a force couple system. And so let's say here that we pick this as point A and we have an overall length of our body of two meters. And like I said, we said the 20 Newton is in the middle. As we sum our moments, even ignoring the fact of that 10 Newton force couple, and I shouldn't say it's 10 Newton, it would actually be 10 Newtons times the two meters. But if I sum my moments here at point A, I would simply say, well, there's no moment coming from my 10 Newton force coming through A. There is gonna be a moment of my 20 Newton. That is a distance of one meter times my 20 Newton force. Does that mean positive or negative from the right hand rule? Sliding from A over to the line of action of that 20 Newton. And then we're going to add in the moment from the 10 Newtons on the far left end. And so we'll take a look at that one. And we have a two meter distance and the force there is 10 Newtons. Now this one's going to be positive from the right hand rule. Now I didn't pick these numbers purposely, but it does turn out on this one because I have a negative 20 Newton meters and a positive 20 Newton meters. There is no moment, no resultant moment here at point A. So the sum of moments at point A is equal to zero. 
And there's nothing earth shattering about that. It just had to do with the amount of each of the forces and the distances between those. It just as easily could have come out to be positive or negative with some different numbers. Okay, but notice that I didn't turn these pair of 10 Newton forces into a couple. Now, if I did, let's draw the equivalent system here and this actually leads a bit into a topic we'll hit at the end of the chapter which is looking at equivalent loading okay so let me keep my 20 newton force and add on in a positive right hand rule direction it doesn't technically matter what location so here is my 20 newton meter positive couple and if i summed my moments once again here at point a we'd end up still with that one meter, so a minus one times 20, and this is one meter, and then I'm gonna add on that couple, 20 Newton meters, positive from the right-hand rule. I still end up with a sum of moments about point A equal to zero Newton meters, right? So it's same exact value but in one I used a couple, in one I used a pair of forces, and they're completely equivalent, okay? And so again, if you don't notice that you have a force pair couple, no big deal, just sum your moments. And to be honest, most of the time I just go forth and try to pick a, a convenient point to sum moments about, not worrying about if there's pairs of forces or not. And the last thing to notice is that when we're summing our moments, especially here on this last one, because it had both a couple as well as an R cross F, realize that your sum of moments in general is the sum of all of your R cross F moments plus the sum of all of your couples as a vector. Okay, so when you're summing moments, you're adding up both the moments coming from R cross F as well as the moments coming from couples. Hope this was a worthwhile introduction to couples from moments and hope you're having a great day.